Many of you are probably wondering what's coming in 1.0, but today I'd rather talk about a few things that are not making it into 1.0. Getting the game to where it is today has been an arduous journey, and there are still so many things that we still want to add to the game, but we sort of need to be a bit realistic. Uh, we would be in early access for many, many, many more years before we would anywhere near close to having everything we want in the game. If we're ever gonna release a complete game, we sort of need to come to terms with the fact that we can't have everything, and we need to decide, you know, what can and can't make it into the full release, and that means making a few sacrifices. This is just how it is when you're developing any game. A game can only be finished when you stop working on it. I, I think to a large extent, this video will sort of disappoint many of you, especially since we haven't really revealed anything yet for 1.0, so you really don't know what you're looking forward to. Uh, but, you know, I'd rather be open about this stuff so that we can sort of paint a better picture as to what you can sort of expect to see in the full release. Uh, or, or in, I guess in this case, Nazi. I do want to point out though, that in contrast to the video we made on, you know, six things we're never adding to Satisfactory, it's still quite possible we're going to add some of these features to the game at some point. It just won't be in time for the 1.0 release. First thing I want to talk about is the big crab enemy you saw back in the reveal trailer in 2018. This is probably not going to come to, as a surprise to many people because we've already said in the past that we've sort of put this enemy on ice. As development for the game has gone on, we sort of realized more and more over time that the combat aspect of Satisfactory isn't very important and it's not something that people you know keep coming back to the game for. I'm sure that adding more combat related features to the game would make the combat better because like right now the combat is a bit mid uh, but we don't mind it being that way because it's not really the heart of the game you know it's not hard at the cards. And the more we look into this, we find that we get a better return of investment in development when we focus on like the factory aspect of the game rather than the combat aspect of the game. And that's why, for instance, in update six, we sort of decided that we would rather add like, you know, variety in the forms of different types of ammo for weapons, uh, which also added a bunch of automation challenges, rather than add combat mechanics or, you know, more involved enemies. We have sort of improved some of these aspects over time, but I think we need to make sort of a bigger change to have like any real bearing on like the combat aspect of the game. And the crab boss is one of those things where we don't really feel like it necessarily adds too much to the game as it is, uh, regarding of like how bomb ass it is. <laughs> and it's a bummer that we've sort of showcased this in our marketing material only to like end up not adding it. But I also think it's a bit unreasonable to hold us accountable for something that we've only showcased for like literally 30 frames in one trailer from almost six years ago. A lot of things have changed since then and you know, we wouldn't have decided to exclude it uh, if it weren't because we thought we would add, you know, any b other better, th if we could add any, uh, 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 if you could add, you we, would, what, you you could, would, you would you, we wouldn't have decided to exclude it if it weren't because we thought we could add, you know, other better things to the game. The main reason why we haven't been able to add this up until now is because we would need to spend a significant amount of time to improve the AI pathing that exists. It's a big, large creature, it's a big, large creature, uh, that doesn't work with the AI system we currently have, unfortunately. So we would sort of need to accommodate the AI system uh, with that creature in mind, and we felt like the development wasn't really worth it for this. Another thing that's not making it into 1.0 is official mod support. I think if you asked us like a couple of years ago whether we would ever launch 1.0 without official mod support, I think we would have like straight up said no. That's not happening. We've sort of built the game with modding in mind. Like that's the reason why our save system works the way it does and a lot of other systems that we've designed, we've designed them with modding in mind. But we were blown away by like how quickly people started making mods to the game. And today there's a very active modding community and you know, they've done amazing work. Fixit.app is a really well made website that give you access to like all the tools necessary to both download and develop mods. Uh, the Satisfactory Mod Manager is very easy to install, to disable and enable mods and such. And like I said, we have a very active modding scene, something that I don't think we anticipated when we launched Satisfactory initially. I think initially we really thought that we weren't going to see any mods until we added official mod support. So the fact that like we have such an active modding scene right now is just like, so amazing to us. And while we don't have official mod support, you know, we still try to support our modding community as much as we can, and we're gonna continue doing so. Having official mod support would of course make it simpler to use mods and potentially even make mods, but you know, it's already pretty streamlined as it is. 
Which, by the way, is all because the modding community has put so much effort into it, which is crazy. And to my understanding, like, the only thing that's kind of limiting in terms of developing mods right now is how we handle sound and music in the game. So I think that could really benefit. Until then, there are already a bunch of really good mods. We have a very active modding community, like I said, and we're super stoked about that. So while we do want to add official mod support eventually, uh, in this case, our efforts could be put into something else that's currently missing in the game. Okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna get crucified for saying this, but yeah, one thing that's not coming in 1.0 is the ability to easily build circular foundations. Uh, now I know this is one of the most requested things from our community in terms of building in the game, but unfortunately, it's a complicated problem. At first glance, this might seem like a trivial thing to implement by just slapping you know, a bunch of triangular pieces together and call it a day, uh, but that's not necessarily the case as different people sort of want different outcomes on this topic. And in some cases, we might need to like sort of redesign how our current build system functions just to be able to support fully given like what people are asking for. Even if we did add separate build pieces, such as like equilateral uh, triangular build pieces or whatever, uh, we'd still need to manage all the dependencies that all our foundation pieces and all our wall pieces and such already have at the moment. That's not to say that we can't do any of these things. It's just that when we looked at like prioritizing development for the game, we always find that like there are other things that don't exist in the game right now that we think are more worth working on because people are already able to build circular platforms. Uh, granted that they're a bit like finicky and annoying to build and they don't look perfect, you know, and there's a bunch of Z fighting, you know, etc., etc. But there are detailed guides out there on how to do this. And since the addition of blueprints, it's become easier to build stuff that curves and make these sort of circular foundations. So I highly recommend checking some of these tutorials out. People are already able to like do really creative stuff with curves and while it's not a smooth experience, you know, people uh, aren't limited by it. But there are limitations to other aspects of the game where, you know, certain features straight up don't exist. So we could definitely improve that aspect of the game. Um, but it always comes down to like prioritization and, and what we work on. And, you know, maybe we, we sort of dropped the ball on this decision specifically. Maybe it would have been really uh, worth to prioritize this aspect of the game. Uh, I guess it's hard for you guys to sort of weigh in on this right now, given that you don't really know all the details for everything that's coming in 1.0 yet. So, so yeah, like once the game is out, do tell us on the QA side if we should prioritize this next. And on the topic of that, I also want to mention roads, because this is also something a lot of people ask about specifically. And it's sort of the same thing there. People are able to build roads in Satisfactory already with the build pieces that exist. It's a finicky, it's annoying, but it's technically possible. Uh, we did prototype actually a sort of system early on where you could build roads using splines, similar to how like train tracks work. Uh, but it wasn't great, if I'm gonna be honest. It was really hard to make it look good. And it didn't really jive that well with the current build mechanics that we had. So we decided to get rid of it. There are also some optimization issues that come with all this stuff. So again, instead of tackling that problem, we instead opted to develop other features for the game that we sort of felt were missing instead of supporting this stuff better. I'm just, okay, so I'm just a messenger here. So like, don't shoot the messenger, okay? But just saying. Next exciting thing that's not coming in 1.0 that I want to talk about is any type of logic system to the game. We're not against this idea as with any of the other ideas. I think these are all great ideas. Uh, we think it could be really cool. We have, you know, many ideas on how we could do this. Uh, and we have even prototyped some of this stuff but we decided to, to not prioritize it for the game, mostly because we don't want the game to be like overly complicated with the addition of extra logic that the play would need to sort of facilitate. We didn't want to design the game where you would need to sort of include logic stuff to be able to fully play the game. Uh, so in that case, it would be sort of an optional thing. Uh, and if it's an optional thing, then the question becomes like whether it's worth spending that amount of time needed to be able to implement something like that uh, when it's not really part of the core gameplay. I, I think that comes down to like a lot of this stuff. It's just basically time and effort that goes into implementing this stuff. Um, and it's always a question of like prioritization for us. And this is a feature that we think could be really cool for Satisfactory. And there are elements in the game where even like minor logic would really benefit greatly from, from the existing gameplay. But um, yeah, don't expect anything like that for 1.0, unfortunately. And the last thing I want to talk about is that there are currently some parts in the game that are going to be removed. You already know of one, which is beacons. 
uh, the reason why we're removing beacons is because we've since updated how the map works with the addition of map markers, which you can more easily like place down on the map instead of having to like physically go and place them in the world. And now, sadly, there are two more casualties, which are flowers and colored cartridges. Rest in peace. The reason for this is because we want to remove cost for customization. Originally, you needed to use color cartridges to be able to paint walls and stuff like that. We found that very tedious, so we opted to remove that for coloring walls when we removed the color gun. And so far, we sort of kept that cost for patterns that you could paint on foundations, but even in the case for these, we, we feel like it's still a bit unnecessary. We, we originally had plans to make it so you could like automate color cartridges, because like running around for 30 hours collecting flowers just so you could paint your factories felt a bit annoying and, you know, unnecessary. But after working a bit on the recipes during the rebalance pass that we're currently doing for 1.0, we felt like having to automate stuff to just like customize patterns doesn't really add that much to the game. So we've decided to just completely remove those and make all customization completely free. Speaking of rebalancing, by the way, if you didn't know, we're currently working on rebalancing many of the recipes in the game. Uh, the rebalance will be mostly focused on the end game, so don't worry too much about like the early and mid sections of the game. Um, those recipes haven't changed too much, if uh, any at all, as far as I know. But we are making general tweaks to like the game overall, and that includes pretty much all the recipes, checking them out. And seeing that it makes sense, I guess. We thought it was best to sort of do this at the end of production rather than like having to do it over and over, over multiple updates. Uh, Cause it's kind of disruptive when like after each update you would have to sort of make changes to your production lines and your factory. So, so that's what we're working on right now. I think I've mentioned this on stream a couple of times that we were planning to do a rebalance pass like this. And uh, now we're doing it. <laughs> So yeah, we're doing it in one big swoop now at the end, and hopefully it won't affect too much. And even the people that it does affect, I think a lot of people are still gonna like restart the game from scratch anyways when 1.0 comes out, so maybe it's not a big deal anyways. This is still somewhat of an ongoing process, so I can't really talk too much about it now, but I can unveil the changes that we've made to the alt recipe that included beacons. So remember how back in update whatever, when we said we were gonna remove beacons and said they were deprecated, we still kept them in the game because there were, was an alt recipe that still used them and it, we didn't wanna disrupt that production line. But now that we're doing rebalancing, we actually know what that recipe looks like. So let's talk about that. So the new ingredients for the uranium fuel unit are 100 encased uranium cells, 10 electromagnetic control rods, three crystal oscillators, and 10 rotors. Um, so that means essentially that instead of beacons in that recipes, we replace it now with rotors. So now you know. So there you have it. These are some of the things that I know people have been sort of asking for that we can confirm right now are unfortunately not coming in 1.0. But maybe later, we'll see. Like I said, like it, these are good ideas. We like these ideas. It's just that we weren't able to make them come to fruition in 1.0. As I've said, I'm sure this video is very disappointing for many people, uh, but I'd rather be upfront about this stuff so you don't wait and expect to see something that's not coming. There are many cool new things coming in 1.0 that I hope will make up for the exclusion of these things. And you know, there are many more features that are not coming. I'm not listing everything because that would be impossible. Uh, I just felt like listing these things at least are things that I've seen t people talk about recently um, where I think a lot of people are sort of looking forward to them and I just want to set the record straight, I guess. I, I feel like I can't like really leave it off at this though. I, I, f I feel like this video might be too much of a bummer if it would just be me listing features that a lot of people are really looking forward to, but won't be seeing in 1.0. So, so I'm gonna give you all a tiny little sneak peek on a little change we've made to the game. Uh, it isn't much, but I hope you'll like it. 